Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Punk Rock Review, home of a bunch of opinionated crap you don't care about, also the home of the feedback you provide that we don't care about, keeps us on an even playing field, and we like that. Real quick shout out to our sponsor, fuck, absolutely no one, feel bad and give us money. Anyhow, moving straight into it today, <laughs> hold on, after, after we put up our credentials, because we are, after all, professional gamers, obviously. Uh, moving straight into it today. Today we're going to be talking about a game that's been out for not all too long, man, but a good amount of months now and whatnot. And of course, we need to, uh, you know, finally address the cat in the room. Alright, so there's no cat in the fucking room. But we need to finally address the game of our first thoughts and impressions on Baldur's Gate 3. That's right, so Baldur's Gate 3, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we, we wrote a song about this game. Because it touched us so much, we're going to play it for you now. You're welcome. Baldur's Gate 3 is out right now. It's been out for a while. First we were like, hey, we want to wait for consoles to expire. They're wait for it to release on them. But instead we were like, let's check the specs on our PC. And we were like, fuck yeah, we can run it on this shit. So we got it on PC. You're welcome. So, just something we had been working on or whatever, and that was inspired by Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, you know, it really kind of uh, sets the tone and whatnot for, uh, you know, well, you know what we want it to set the tone for, which is whatever we want it to. Who cares? It doesn't matter. But, of course, our first thoughts and impressions on Baldur's Gate 3. What can be said about this one? Well, holy shit, man. Uh, definitely deserving, man, of, of accolades and praise and, uh, you know, everything that everyone's thrown at this one and such. Uh, you know, it's definitely... Not your run-of-the-mill, just bullshit around, uh, you know, regular release game, man. There is so much to this, so much level of depth and detail, man, and lore and story and whatnot that really just meld brilliantly, man, uh, into, uh, you know, your experience, man, and your play and everything like that. Uh, and whilst, uh, you know, some of the learning curve for people coming into, uh, you know, Dungeons & Dragons might be fairly prevalent, man, and some of it might be hard to understand and such, because this ain't your just automatic recharge button mashing kind of Diablo experience or anything like that, man, uh, you know, even though it's uh, top-down and whatnot. There is so much more <laughs> as far as, like, depth and detail and everything like that, man, uh, decision-making, choices and whatnot, on top of, uh, you know, the choices you make in character creation, or if you even take one of the run-of-the-mill, uh, you know, little avatars that are already created characters already created, man, that fall within the confines of the world and the story and everything like that. Uh, you know, on our first playthrough, we were been going through uh, Gale and whatnot. And full disclaimer, this is obviously our first thoughts and impressions because we haven't beaten this one yet. We keep getting sidetracked by... Sh don't fucking tell anyone... Uh, fucking Overwatch 2 still, man. We keep getting fucking sidetracked with that shit. But we got our Boulder Skate 3, man. We got it going and whatnot. We'll get through it. We, uh, man, fucking, we've been, yeah, wild, <laughs> wild hearts, all that shit or whatever the fuck. Uh, you know, yeah, we've been getting distracted with some other titles and games. But, uh, you know, yeah, we, we keep coming back to it and whatnot because it's so great, man. Uh, now, of course, uh, the character creation, customization, man, all of the things that you kind of decide to go with as far as your traits, your abilities, man, uh, you know, really affects the game overall, man. As far as dialogue choices and stuff that actually do matter or can change the, you know, way that uh, the story unfolds or a, uh, you know, kind of event will unfold in the game and whatnot based on your decisions. And then it's not just your decisions, of course, because of the Dungeons and Dragons elements to it and stuff like that, you get your dice roll and such. Uh, to, you know, kind of see if you meet the criteria for even being able to execute the decision or choices that you made. And you also get your, uh, you know, kind of uh, different talent tree, uh, you know, kind of perks and stuff like that, uh, that, you know, affect your roll too or whatever. Maybe your guy's really good at picking locks, uh, so you roll the dice and whatnot and uh, you get a low roll, but because of your talents and stuff like that, uh, you know, it ends up beeping it to where you do pick the lock. Maybe your guy's, uh, you know, really good at talking to people and such, only, uh, and it's just an example, you're wearing something that makes, uh, you know, your speech not as good, uh, so you're, you know, you get the dice roll and whatnot, and, you know, of course, it's just a digital dice, you're not really rolling dice, uh, you know, but it'll roll it, and then, you know, there's even traits that can uh, give you negative things, so, you know, you hit the bar of where you needed, say you needed to roll, and it's, uh, you know, D20s and whatnot, for all, all ones of you that didn't know it. 
Hi, Mom. Uh, you know, you're rolling a D20 on there. Maybe you got to get 10. You hit 10, but you have some kind of perk or trait that's, uh, you know, affecting you that gives you minus 1 or minus 2. Then, obviously, that 10 becomes a 9 or an 8, and then you fail on what you're doing and such, even including picky locks or whatever. Maybe your guy's not good at it, and so he has some, uh, you know, negative aspects to it, and, you, you know, it just is so unique, man, of a, uh, you know, kind of digital playable version, man, of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you know, because that's where seemingly a lot of the systems have been implemented from and whatnot, and kind of the, uh, you know, techniques of storytelling and such kind of fall into it and whatnot, almost like the narrator's a dungeon master in its own. Uh, you know, it's just such a great, unique experience, man. Definitely worth checking out. Now, of course, we've been rocking it on uh, on PC and whatnot. Uh, it had been out on PS5 and PC for the longest. It had been delayed on Xbox, presumably. Uh, we think now it's been, uh, you know, kind of shadow dropped. It is available, man, on the Xbox ecosystem and all that. Uh, and, you know, it's definitely something that's worth checking out. Uh, definitely something that's worth playing. Definitely something that's fun. Definitely something that we continue to, uh, you know, want to go back to and whatnot if damn over watch 2 didn't keep distracting us we probably would have been done with it by now but we can't help sit uh you know yeah we have problems we can admit it uh anyhow Baldur's Gate 3 man fucking awesome game uh, very good in the stylized scenes, the choices, uh, you know, that, that they took, man, and putting this one out. Uh, definitely a great play. Our first thoughts and impressions. What can be said about Baldur's Gate 3? It gets a good old-fashioned F. For fan fucking tastic. Uh, you know, yeah, what a what a remarkably amazing game. So Baldur's Gate 3, you get an F in our book. Uh, that's it. Give us money. Have a good one. You probably didn't. We'll catch you next time. Probably won't.